Oh yeah, black sun in the hizzle off a shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show today. And before we start, I wanna say the views and expressions of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, or membership. Viewer discretion is advised. With that being said, this is gonna be the last discussion on marijuana for the year because you know this is about the sixth one you know we keep going back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth and so now we have a doctor to present the last show of the year so with that being said i want to introduce my panel to the right we have the doctor Hi, introduce yourself good afternoon and thank you very much for this opportunity to be here my name is dr uma thanabalan yes thank you doctor Okay, and to her right, we got, how you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, my name is Radical Russ Belvel. I'm the executive producer of 420radio.org, okay. the world's 24-hour marijuana legalization network. All right, all right. Now, now okay, I'm, I'm going to get to you. I'm going to ask a question on that. And to his right, we got Brother Ian, one of the original. No doubt, man. Atheists. What's up, they talk man? about black, <laughs> real black, you the original. Ian the Atheist, the, man, yeah, original right. black atheist of Atlanta, man, co-host, man. Happy to be here, man. We're going to break down some bud today, right? Right. <laughs> well, hey, right. hey, and I want to return you from the original. Thank uh, you, sir. You, you, one of the originals. And then to his right, we got the lovely Chi, my hot. You greetings, know, greetings. Nathan Chima Patrick Heather. Yes. Introduce yourself. Chi. <laughs> I'm Chima Ott, um, health and wellness advocate, also author of Healing Gifts from Our Planet, A Woman's Journey to Vibrant Health. I'm here today to discuss our topic of marijuana, whether it should be legal or not, and is it really useful? All right, all right. So we have two topics here that I want to discuss. We have the legalization of medical marijuana, and then we have um, the casual use of marijuana. So. These would be two different discussions, right? Okay, so my first question is, um, I looked on the, uh, you know, is marijuana a medicine? And they say that a lot of the medicines already have the healing properties in it. So why the push for legalization when they already, you know, basically have the ingredients in a lot of the medication as far as in what medications? I'm well, they, they didn't specify. They just said a lot of them are really, they're using some of the ingredients in the marijuana already, okay. but they're just not letting us know about it. Okay. Um, cannabis, first of all, let me start out. Cannabis means uh, canna, which is stalk, and by, which means two. So cannabis is a plant, a flowering plant that it has the stalks and has two sexes in it. The male one is the one that we are using for a lot of the medicinal purposes. Okay. Cannabis has been around for thousands of years. Right. Uh, what we are learning now is that uh, a system called the endocannabinoid system, mm -hmm. or otherwise known as ECS, is actually within our own body. Right. We've just learned to discover it, and also that there are receptors. Um, what we found out is the cannabis is able to mimic the same receptors, to fulfill those receptors, and the cannabinoids. Cannabis has about over 400 components in it. It has about 60 to 80 cannabinoids. Mm -hmm. There are two primary receptors that we're aware of right now, which is called the CB1 and CB2. The CB1 is primarily in the brain. It's also in other parts of the organ system, like the liver, mm -hmm. the kidneys, or pancreas, or spleen. The CB2s are primary receptors that we're realizing are in the immune system. Okay. I could go a little further if you like and give yeah, you more detail. Yeah, I want detail. to know, do other animals have this same system? Excellent question. We've actually learned that these receptors are over 600 million okay. years okay. old, and they have evolved from the sea squirt as being one of the oldest ones okay. that we know about in the human beings. So basically, today. marijuana is further proof of evolution. Absolutely. Okay, okay. I, I like that concept. Okay, okay. I really like that concept. Definitely. I've never heard it put that way, but I am glad to hear you saying it. No doubt. 
and, and to go to your question of there's constituents of marijuana that many people want to make into pharmaceutical medications. Uh, one company out in uh, Britain is called GW Pharmaceuticals, okay. and they use uh, they extract some of the cannabinoids like THC or CBD. They're making another uh, a particular drug called Epidiolex. So there are uh, there are scientists and researchers working out there to make standard type pharmaceutical pills, sprays, and inhalers for cannabis. But one of the mm. reasons why so many patients turn to the natural herb is because of something that uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta revealed in speaking to Dr. Raphael Machulam, is this entourage effect, that the cannabinoids work better as part of the natural plant. I mean, if you can think of how an orange is healthier for you than, say, orange juice from right. concentrate. Okay. It's kind of that idea. Okay. Plus, with cannabis, you can grow your own medicine, you can handle your own treatment, and it's often much cheaper and more reliable, and with such low risk of side effects compared to a lot of these pharmaceuticals, it's no wonder so many people are turning to it. But let me ask a question, because you mentioned, I'm glad you mentioned the orange and the orange juice, and we're going to get to chia in just a minute here. Um, let's just say you have the marijuana plant. Okay, so it has one chemical. So when you burn it, it becomes a chemical compound, a whole different chemical. So are we talking the natural plant? Or are we talking the burnt plant? Good question. There are many people now who are uh, using cannabis as the unburned plant, using it in okay. edibles, uh, using it uh, in its raw form, juicing it. That's okay. that's becoming more popular. So what's the best way to get it? It depends on your, it de really depends on how, what your needs are as a, as a patient. Uh, when you're eating cannabis, the uh, THC that we know is metabolized differently inside the body, in, okay. in the gut. It, it turns into 11-hydroxy, which is a much more uh, psychoactive type of chemical. Uh, when you're inhaling it, if you're using it with vaporization or smoking, you have an immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. You know when you've had enough. You're not going to use too much because you can feel it as you're using it. But it really depends on the patient. I'm sure you have a lot of patients that have a lot of needs with that differ. Uh, absolutely. First of all, right now we have three ways that we can uh, consume it. It can be either eaten, okay. and with the form of being eaten, there are products from cookies to cakes to making teas to right. tinctures, which is becoming very popular. So, um, Doctor, we're not talking about actually burning the plant. No, we're talking about okay. consuming it in three ways. Just taking it right. like a herb, right? We can right? take it in, like I said, the first, I mean, there's three options, and everybody's a little different, and that's the beauty of cannabis. There is no one cookie cutter. There mm -hmm. is no take this pill at this dose six times a day. Everybody's so, a little different. Right, but so we're going to run into regulation issues as far as the government's concerned. So let's just say, like, take two Tylenols and call me in the morning. You know, take 300 milligrams, well, we might 200 say milligrams. start off with two puffs. That might be the first oh, thing we do with drops. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Two puffs? Okay, okay, so you're saying We can two inhale drops. it? No, it depends. First of all, let me go back. First of all, you can either inhale it. Either it's smoked or vaporized. Those are the two popular methods right now. We can ingest it, which is in food products or drinking it or teas or tinctures. Or we can apply it topically. Okay. So, but isn't when smoke comes into the lungs? I mean, the, the lungs reject smoke of any kind. Well, you any know. type you, <laughs> you know. inhale anything. Right. It's an irritant. It could be an irritant. Right. But the beauty of cannabis is that it has its own anti-inflammatory products. That is why people are always amazed when you have an asthmatic patient or a patient with COPD that is on oxygen in a COPD patient or on an inhaler in a patient that has asthma who is turning to cannabis and they are inhaling it. Because instead of a patient that's asthmatic to hit on their inhaler uh -huh. and have palpitations mm -hmm. and also, you know, they're already in a panic attack because they're constricted and where they can just either by smoking or an inhaler in a vaporization form, within 15 seconds they have the impact. 20 seconds. I have a question about that, um, Doctor. Oh, I have my own mic, but um, just like I'm a raw foodist as well and um, an herbalist, and anytime you heat food, you change it. Anytime you light something like uh, cannabis, you would change it. Would there be any difference of the compound as smoking it as you would eating it? Because if you're lighting it up and you're inhaling it, you're changing the compound, correct? And that's absolute. This is very interesting because, again, it varies from patient to patient. It really depends on also their metabolic system as far as their liver 
primarily because cannabis is metabolized in the liver when ingested. Mm -hmm. But when you smoke it, it actually gets directly into the bloodstream. That's why it's able to impact so quickly. It's, and because it's a lipophilic, meaning it's fat soluble versus water soluble, it's able to get right into the blood-brain barrier, cross it, mm -hmm. and uh, impact right at the different locations of the brain. Well, what I'm hearing is, so what you're saying is it's not a one cure that cures all, basically. It's just based on the individual. As far as the treatment purpose of it? Let's just say I have glaucoma, he has something, she has Absolutely. something. So you're saying that it, it's a one drug cure all? It's absolutely a one cure all in for multiple purposes. Okay, Having doc, said that. Wait a minute, you said cure. Yes. Now I've got to ask the tough questions here. The word cure can be extended to different things, okay? What cures a cold could be, you know, rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. no, or, I got a question for that one. Okay. I got a question for that one because as an herbalist and natural food uh, um, uh, and believer in alternative medicine, I believe that the body heals itself. I believe that, um, that whatever you assist the body with the healing, whether it's um, an herb or, or tincture, it, it, it assists the body into doing its own healing. Absolutely so correct. So there would no be, in my estimation, I don't like to use the word cure, I use, I use the word healing. In the, right. so, so if I'm going to ingest something, it's not this is going to cure me, this is going to help me heal True. myself. I love what you just said okay. because this is the heart of the endocannabinoid system. It was meant in our body for absolute recovery and adaptation. What has happened with time is that our body's not able to cope with it anymore, okay? What we were exposed to where we were able to rest, our food was healthier, we have so much stuff that we don't even know what's in our system. We don't know right. how to relax, right. we don't know. And this is right up the line as far as Dr. DeMarzo in 1998 in Trends in Neurology said this system was meant to relax, to eat, to rest, to forget, and protect. These are very key so, words. So the body makes THC naturally, does it make? It makes endocannabinoids. Okay. THC is what we find in cannabis. Okay. So those are two different words, but the system that it works with is the endocannabinoid system. And I want to reiterate this, because this is a system, we need to understand the system, because it is what exists within our body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to repeat that, within mm -hmm. our body. So it assists and bring, as in, as in uh, the rehabilitation of our normal own. functioning day-to-day -day life. Okay, so what you're saying is the marijuana speeds this up? Or? Well, the marijuana now is a supplementation what it's able to do is, again, balancing this whole system out. So why not get it through broccoli, cauliflower, Because broccoli kale does not greens. Cons have the cannabinoids. There is no broccoli receptor. There is a cannabis receptor. So there's no vegetable that you can actually eat that has no... That has to... That maybe there is other things that we'll find. But right now, the topic of the point is we're talking about cannabis. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And so that's what... Um, well, the reason I bring that up because people, in argument's sake, you know, they always say, well, you can get that through a vegetable, a tomato or a potato, you know. Why, yeah. why you gotta yeah. smoke the weed? What's well, the, uh, the problem? The, you know? the, to get to what, what you're getting at here, you know, the endocannabinoid system and the receptors we have, if you think of a receptor like a, a, a lock, Mm -hmm. And your endocannabinoids, anandamide, uh, is the one that we produce, is a certain molecule that fits into that receptor and, and twists the lock, right? Mm -hmm. it, it opens that lock. Well, THC that comes from a cannabis plant will also work on that lock. Not in the same way, not in the same level or maybe effectiveness, but it also opens that same lock. So why can't we get that from broccoli? Because broccoli doesn't fit that keyhole. It's not going to open it. An orange is not going to open that. And the other thing about the endocannabinoid system, to go to what uh, Dr. Uma was saying, is uh, I've heard it referred to as what helps to regulate our body's homeostasis. And most of the, in fact, all of the pathways in the human body, if you think of the nerves and the blood and all the different systems we have, are right. kind of a one direction sort of flow. And the endocannabinoid system flows the other way. It's like the feedback mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's how our hearts are told, to, are, are right. kept yeah, in line, and our right. temperature is kept at a certain stasis and so forth. Appetite, appetite, uh, memory, and so many things. Well, good question, because, you know, 
the doc, she talked about how, um, you know, it helps you relax. Mm -hmm. But you know, the body, now y'all can quote me on this, and correct me, you can have too much rest and kind of throw off your sleep. Because I've heard, I've seen where sites talked about insomnia. Mm -hmm. Now my only guesstimation, and you can correct me doc, and you can correct me also, is that when you mar take marijuana, it'll relax you, but for every relaxation, there's a period of time where you have to wake. I call it the sleep zone. Mm -hmm. If you go to bed at an early time, you can mm -hmm. wake up at a time. You go to bed late, you wake up late. So does it throw off? So does it actually throw off the natural ability to say, you know what, I worked eight hours, now I'm winding down, going to bed, and I can wake up, as opposed to, I'm going to sleep all day long. <laughs> I don't feel yeah, like going to work. I think that's a good question. If it's a right. depressant or a stimulant, mm -hmm. what, what does it categorize as? Well, it, th there's a lot of variety in cannabis, and, and uh, Dr. Uma already mentioned that there's two main uh, types. There's the indica and the sativa. Uh, sativa, and, and again, it depends on the person using it, but for myself, sativa is almost... Stimulant's not quite the right word because that kind of connotes an artificial jump-starting of your nervous system, but sativas generally make me feel more a, a, a focused, awake, uh, attentive, and creative. That's a stimulant. Yeah. Uh, the indicas, uh, I always, she has her thing with indica. My little thought thing on indica is indica couch. Because you're going to smoke right. indica, you're going to be in the couch, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because it does have more body relaxation, muscles, pain, the stiffness, arthritis. Mm -hmm. Those kind of effects are better treated generally with an indica. And then within both sativa and indica, there are so many different varieties of plant. You've, you may have heard the silly names, Super Silver Haze mm -hmm. and Skunk This and OG Kush and so on which I don't think are any sillier than Celebrex, Vioxx, and anything else with an X in it. But. So those same, so those same uh, attributes, basically, they, they'll uh, suppress some pain, like say if I got a toothache or mm -hmm. this and that. So my question is, you know, I mean, I see the advantages of maybe if I have arthritis or if I hurt myself, mm -hmm. but um, what major uh, illness does it cure, though? The, the cure, the latest one that we're finding information on is mm. head trauma, concussion. There is okay. no cure for concussion. There's treatment for it, right? Okay. You get your football player or a boxer or whatever, you get hit in the head. Mm -hmm. We can treat your pain. We can treat everything. But there's nothing to actually help fix the sheared up brain neurons that right. happen from that impact. Okay. Cannabis actually does. THC actually generates a protein that helps the brain protect its own neural cells to the point where about 50% of a concussion can be recovered from. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you brought that up because there was a young man who was protesting um, out in Oakland, California and got hit in the head with a bean bag. Mm -hmm. He's just now sued. He was on Democracy Now! as mm -hmm. of recent. So what you're saying is basically because he said he told Amy Goodman basically half his brain is dead. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that would cure? It would definitely help him with more of his recovery. I, Cure, get to back, back to 100% where he was before he got hit? Probably not. Okay. But okay, he's going to be better okay. off than with any other. In fact, I foresee a day when on the sideline of every NFL stadium, <laughs> there will be vaporizers. And when a player gets a concussion, that will be the first treatment for the guy is to get him some, some right. THC. Okay, okay. Well, the beauty of cannabis is we've always, and I want to reiterate this over and over, um, it is so variable in its therapeutic effects. We okay. still don't know the scope of this yet. We are learning, and a lot of this is I have learned through my patients. Mm -hmm. I have had patients from the age of 18 to 96, mm -hmm. and they're not all looking for the recreational or the social mm -hmm. cannabis. Right, right, understood, right. And when you have a patient that walks in that's on over 25 medications mm -hmm. and is sick and tired of it, and has gone through the gamut of every side effect because of the medication and is toxic from it, that's criminal that we can't offer them something else. And my first line thing is that why can't we use cannabis first? Why does somebody have to have been treated with all the other medication? I mean, we're not even talking pharmaceuticals from a prescription. We're talking Advil, Tylenol, these two meds are used like candy in our well, society. Well, Doc, as you know, Chief can back me up on that. We're not here to cure anybody. We're here to make money. Well, we are here. <laughs> I mean, the beauty of cannabis, we're talking about it also, is that it is preventive. That's what's amazing. None of these pills are preventive. They are treatments. Well, they're not designed to yeah, be preventive. Right. I mean, Chief, you can touch well, on I, that, I, right? I'm just afraid that, oh, no, um, I'm just afraid that, you know, 
if or when it becomes legal that um, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't change it just to make money and then it's not as effective as it would be in its natural state like like herbs mm. like like when you go to the herb store yeah, like synthetic I'm, I'm, I'm THC really you know right. I'm Explain. really skeptical I mean because because they've done that to so many things mm -hmm. they've taken um, right. and it's just about I it's about it money man. it's about making money right. it's they not been, about healing or helping people heal well, so how do we handle that part well, of the I, I think you bring up uh, a very good point that you know we're trying like people don't I think there's such a misconception of cannabis it's just thought of as a drug, and you know, sad to say. No, is it a drug? It is a drug. Okay, all right. It is a drug, but the connotation of this drug is that you're out of your mind and that you sit on a couch and you do absolutely nothing. We are learning from the array of people. There are so many people being healed by this. Well, okay. doctor, I think the the issue here is because we're, we're having two different discussions now. We here on Arena, we're for the medical use of it. But what I think the concern is, you know, this being Georgia's, you know, Southern State down here. You know, we're concerned about- Yeah, you gotta about break down the decriminalization the versus the crim legalization, because I don't want these kids out here just walking around with a blunt. Well, you know? you, th this is one of the issues that people, under, I'd rather them rather be smoking a blunt than instead of having a beer in their hand. No, I'm talking about for the police sake and the safety of our kids, man. Right. Well, that, that, that's gonna also have to change. I mean, the first thing, and I'm going to let Russ answer a little bit about this because decriminalization and legalization and medical marijuana are three different topics. Right, that's so, right. Right. Okay, we are, they're not to be confused, and I, and I don't want that to be confused, and I'm going to let Russ answer. No, that's why, yeah, for, for, yeah, for the record. Yes, there's three different for, Right, right, so yeah. that's why I wanted to really kind of fine-tune Yeah, she's fine doing medical this. marijuana. Right, she's yes, doing the medical, yes. so you... They, that's that's going to be well, towards they, you right there. The issues, uh, they're separate issues. They do have effects on one another, though. Uh, the fact that marijuana has been illegal for so long and been a black market uh, commodity mm -hmm. has led the people breeding the cannabis to breed out certain aspects of it. Absolutely. If you saw the Sanjay Gupta documentary, mm -hmm. you saw these little epileptic kids mm -hmm. get yeah. healed from CBD. Yeah. Well, it's very difficult for us to get plants that have CBD because that doesn't get you high. In fact, the plant they made for this little girl was originally called Hippie's Disappointment because it wouldn't get you high. Right. When people are breeding plants to sell on the black market, they want the most bang for the buck. They want right. the high THC. THC. And so all these strains now have been developed into the recreational market and wanting mm -hmm. to affect the mind and the, and the attitude and the mood when there's so many other cannabinoids that they didn't get paid attention to because it wasn't important recreationally. So they do affect one another. Uh, as far as the decriminalization and the legalization, in case some folks may not, may not know, decrim just basically means if you use it, we won't put you in jail. We might give you a ticket, we might give you a right. sanction, it's just a ticket, a fine, so we're whatever. Still make money off of but it. it does nothing to change the market. If you buy, sell, or grow, you're still going to go to prison. Right, right? absolutely. And that's right. where the violence and the problem that's and the right. crimes are. So decrim, well, I'm not going to oppose decrim, but it just does not go far enough. Yeah, yeah, right. And for people that are afraid of legalization, I think they're framing it in the wrong, they got it framed wrong in their heads, thinking that legalization means we're going to approve of or that we are going to invite uh, marijuana use. Right. Well, the fact is people have been using marijuana for thousands of years. Right mm -hmm. now there's 27 million annual smokers, 17 million monthly. 10 million weekly and 3 million daily marijuana smokers, and they're not going anywhere. Right. So the choice is not whether we legalize or don't legalize, it's whether we give the profits to criminals or to taxpayers. That's the question. Okay. Do we regulate this? Because it's not gonna go anywhere. And we learned this lesson with say, running the numbers. There used to be running the numbers. Well, now we have state lotteries. Mm, that's right. Because, not because we thought gambling was cool, but we realized that you know, if we legalize this, the state could make some money on it, and we could put some money toward problem gambling. Right. We could do, help well, people. My, my issue is this because, you know, with alcohol, prescription medicine, there are uh, checks and balances. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you know, you cannot buy a 40 ounce and go drive in your car, mm -hmm. or you get, might get a ticket for public drainage. So there are checks and balances. Sure. So my question is, because um, I know we talked about the legalization, I mean, uh, medical aspects. We, we, we there. Mm -hmm. But the... <laughs> The other side of the fence, yeah. the other folk, you know, they, they, you got people rooting for y'all for their only personal sure. gain. Like, yeah, sure. you know, I can't wait to get high. <laughs> and I think, <laughs> there, you know, whack, 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 whack. I think another one of those, uh, 
th that's another one of those issues there is when we're talking about whether or not uh, we're going to support this, it's not whether or not we're going to support people getting high. They are. They already are. We're just trying to decide what are we going to do about it. But does, doesn't this create a false sense of security for the young mind? Well, like, oh, it's legal. Oh, I can smoke now. See, people, like you said, yeah, they get in the wrong yeah. concept because we're talking about healing people, cancer patients, mm -hmm. you know, people getting head traumas. Mm -hmm. Confused with walking down the street, smoking sure. and those, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're, we're talking, you know, that's why I try yeah. to have conversations with people. Like, I had a conversation with a person who said, I'm all for medical marijuana, mm -hmm. but I'm not for the casual use because yeah. casual use, there has to be checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Meaning, let me just ask this question Is marijuana addictive? Well, let me get to your checks and balances and I'll answer that too, because I'm glad you bring up checks and balances because right. under prohibition we have none. There is no check and balance on marijuana. How much marijuana are you allowed to have? How much marijuana are you allowed to use? And How, are you what allowed is the to limit dri for drive? Right. There, under under prohibition, it's right. just, you can't have it. All right, well, what okay. if I do have it? How do I behave responsibly? There's no guidance. With alcohol, we don't want people drinking and driving. Right. We have that check and balance through DUI laws That's right. and through public information campaigns. You know, click it or ticket. Don't drink and drive. Friends That's don't right. let friends drive drunk. Drive responsibly. We don't get those Alcoholics messages. Alcoholics Anonymous. We don't get those messages with marijuana because right. of its illegality. The checks oh, and balances okay. comes from the regulation. When we regulate it, the check and balance comes of checking kids' IDs. When we regulate it, the check and balance comes of keep it in adult stores. When we regulate it, the check and balance comes with TV ads. In fact, Colorado just released three ads well, see, that had to do with uh, don't drive high. And they're hilarious, by the way. You should well, look see, them up. You know, let me tell you something. The doc here won the half the battle already because she said that marijuana is a drug. So mm -hmm. once we can admit that it's a drug, mm -hmm. Then we, we, we meet you halfway there. Because when ACP say, oh, it's not a drug, I'm saying, oh, okay, no, these people are not realistic. Okay, so now my question is, and I'm about to meet y'all halfway. Okay. See, I'm the United States government, so I'm about to see how honest you are. Okay. Is marijuana addictive? Yes. Marijuana wow. is addictive, sugar is addictive, fat is addictive, oh, salt is addictive, video oh, sugar is a drug. Uh, there's a lot of things yeah. that are addictive, but how. I, I, I kind of take psychologically or biologically. This is where I, I take a. There's a feed of candidas in my stomach. There. I'll, I'll let the doctor answer the, the, okay. the <laughs> medical aspect of it, but I can okay. tell you from a personal point of view. My father was a, a speed addict and an alcoholic, and right. when I was when I was 11 years old, he went back in, in in a trailer house that was behind our home and tried kicking cold turkey for three weeks, and I had to listen to him screaming and my mom pulling out buckets of puke and and rags from wiping down the walls from him hallucinating and trying to and him bleeding from picking things off his skin. Yeah. yeah. Now, when I don't, I smoke marijuana daily, but when I have to go a week or two without marijuana, that doesn't happen. I, I might be a little grumpy the first day. Little, I might have grumpy. trouble sleeping that first night. But aside from just that. Just a little grumpy. Just a little grumpy. Just a little grumpy. <laughs> Honey, but define a little grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to back up. Is it addictive? It is addictive by nature. Okay. What I mean is that depends on the person. Okay. okay. If somebody gets addicted to sugar, when they come off of it, they're going to have symptoms. The same way, it's more of a habit forming than an addictive. Well, so let me just say this real quick, Doc. So, you know, we got some prisons down here, mm -hmm. and we look at the stats, right? Sad. And every time the young black males get out of prison, oh, we got to, they don't commit new crimes. Mm -hmm. We just say, you know what, we're going to test you for THC. And by 98% of them go right back to prison. Now, well, if that ain't an addiction, I don't know what it is. Well, you know, it's interesting <laughs> because the original data from what I've seen is that mm -hmm. what had happened is people got arrested for marijuana possession. Right. Okay. And this is where it comes down to the legal system. They had a choice whether to spend time in jail or to attend a program. Mm. So, of course, the patients, the people that were arrested, ended up being patients at these institutions. I'm for that. And when they went and looked at the data and drug tested them, people that are marijuana users, it's in their system much longer because it is fat soluble. If somebody had done cocaine, it's out of their system in three days. So you do the stats now. But you most of your in. average, uh, let, let me just say black males. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say all your black males know the time period that it stays in your system, but they're going to smoke it anyway. But that's, you know, i got to go see the probation. What I'm trying to explain but is how the data came out okay. to say that cannabis was addictive. They went into these places where they mm -hmm. were being treated and saying you are cannabis positive. Therefore, you are 
addicted to it, and cannabis is an addictive drug. Not because of looking at what got them there. Mm. Not that they made a choice instead of being in prison. And cannabis is gonna stay in your system. Even if there are people that stop smoking, but if they were chronic users, it could stay in their system for more than 45 days. 45 days. And it also depends on how fat you are. If you're male right. or female. It, because how it's much a, melanin you got, too. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of variations. Good point, in. Okay. No, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, but I want to leave this main point. You brought up about alcohol. Tobacco kills over 450,000 people a year. Alcohol kills over 90,000 people a year. Marijuana okay. kills zero. Zero. I want this. So it has no cross. tar? No tar? No. Uh... Cannabis has resins, okay? Mm -hmm. Tobacco has tar. Tobacco has tar. Mm -hmm. So this is the point. People die from aspirin. People die from prescription drugs. Over 35,000 people die from prescription drugs. There is nobody, nobody dying from cannabis. Does it make a difference what you smoke the weed in? What yeah. type of paper you roll? It can. You know uh, just to address some of the, the smoking things, because you had a question about smoking earlier too that I want to make sure got covered. In uh, 2006, the Washington Post reported on a doctor named Dr. Donald Tashkin. He was mm -hmm. a University of California, Los Angeles researcher, yes. pulmonologist, who'd done a 30-year retrospective study on people who smoked cannabis, people who smoked tobacco, people who smoked both, and people who smoked neither. Okay, so you got your, all your possibilities there. I'm going to have to gather both of y'all because <laughs> tobacco is not on trial here. <laughs> it's right. cannabis. But what they found, what Dr. Tashkin found was that not only did cannabis smokers, only cannabis, mm -hmm. cannabis smokers have not a higher incidence of head, neck, or lung cancer. They had a lower incidence of head, neck, and lung cancer. Pot smokers get less lung cancer than non-smokers. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. See, you're losing trick words here. Mm -hmm. You're saying, let me slow this down. You're saying that, so you're not saying that the marijuana cures the throat cancer. You're just saying there's less likely as It's a answer. preventative. It helps to prevent it from happening in the first place. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go back and I'm going to check all well, the Well, hey, I got an answer on that. Okay. Cannabis has uh, been found to have about four properties in when, when we're talking about cancer, okay? It has uh, the property of what we called antiproliferative, which means it stops it from, let me get my glasses on here, okay, take being time. able to grow and reproduce. It also has the ability as an anti-metastatic, which means you've heard the word, well, it started out here, it ended up in their brain, or the cancer started out here and it ended up in their bone. So it also has that property of it. Um, okay, so wait, wait, so now you're saying okay. that the, let me have a real quick question here before I forget, because Ian had the same question. So you're saying that the marijuana is a male and female, so it has testosterone and estrogen in it, correct? Right, we're not, no, we're talking about the male plants. The male plants, plants. okay. But what I'm talking about, the camp properties of this plant is that antiproliferative, meaning that it doesn't help the cancer cells to reproduce, so keep that happening. Okay. It's anti-angiogenic, and this is huge because you need blood formation for a cell to survive. It's able to not allow the blood formation for the cancer cells alone. It protects the good cells. It stops the blood flow to the cancer cells. And we mentioned that it doesn't spread to the organ, and it's another beauty thing. It's called apatitic, which means that it induces the cancer cells to seek death. As we normally age, our cells die off, and that our body knows it needs to die off, okay? And new cells are reproduced. Well, we want those cancer cells to be killed. We want them to kill themselves. So what's And that's what can cannabis is able to do also. These so are the four properties that we have in the literature that has been well established. Yeah, I have another question for you too. Um, you mentioned earlier that, that um, marijuana or the cannabis does pass the blood-brain barrier. Yes. Have they done any studies to use that as a carrier? You are right on the money, Dawn, because okay. they're actually using it now for chemotherapy agents, mm -hmm. especially with some of these glioblastomas, which mm -hmm. are deadly. I mean, death sentence as soon as you're diagnosed. Right, that's right. We are now being able, and again, the beauty of this beautiful molecule, mm -hmm that it is able to, I call it sort of being the missile in the submarine. 
it's mm -hmm. able to carry it right there right. and go boom. Right. Take care of the problem right at the moment mm -hmm. where it's uh, impacted. Right, right. I got an important yeah. question for the men. Does it slow down sperm production? That's a good question. Well, let's see. Uh, Bob Marley had 11 kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Nelson Come had on, nine man. kids. That's Tommy Chong food. has that's, seven kids. That's no, the mangoes, I, man. I, 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 the, uh, there's a s tiny slight effect, but not to the point where anybody's going to be going uh, uh, sterile uh, at any point. And it's temporary to the point when you're using the cannabis. So when you're high, yeah, you might not be able to uh, conceive as well. But, you know, once you've not used for a day or so it's okay. not going to be much difference but wouldn't it like intent like let's just say you know because bm makes up a great point here because with the males we're having problems with the plastics mm -hmm. so marijuana would it intent say for even i'm having trouble having just a little trouble having kids so wouldn't marify marijuana intensify that trouble if you're if you're trying to with conceive, the estrogen yeah you probably probably best to not use uh cannabis oh, okay mm. glad to, okay so the government Good. be using this as some population control on the black males man um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? I it's such a small effect. Oh. It's not even I mean, statistic. we're looking at actually studies now, even with mothers that are using it while they're pregnant, mm -hmm. and even while they're breastfeeding. And this is another thing um, people don't realize. A mother that breastfeeds, her, the first drop that baby gets has endocannabinoids in it. So from birth to death, we are, and again, this is within our body. This is not something foreign. Mm -hmm. This is something within our body, and again, it's able to recover and adapt our body. So what level of THC is toxic? What? Zero. There's no. been some studies that say between 4,000 to 40 th times the amount of a recreational user. By that time, you're going to be sleeping on that couch, and you will not. <laughs> but again, to answer your question, there is... Um, no component of cannabis that is known to be a respiratory depressant. Mm -hmm. Now that's what kills people okay. with alcohol and prescription medications. That's not what's happening. So do you cannabis. think they should have put the amount of THC on a bag or a bottle? Should they tell you how much is in it? I think we're getting there where we're going to be able to say, you know, this is the concentrate. Mm -hmm. And this is where I think research is going to be very important. And I know to coming back to your question, about the pharma, I think the pharmaceuticals can get really involved in this. I know in Europe they're using cannabis as suppositories, so there's a different delivery system. So mm -hmm. you know, again, the thought process here has been this whole concentration about CBDs, and we don't want the euphoric effect. Well, what's wrong with people being happy? Is my question. Why can't this component? We are supposed to be relaxed and happy. But why not do that naturally? You know, like I said, for that's every, what our body's every, trying to do. Our body's trying to do that naturally. We're not able to keep up with it. But wouldn't, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, Doc. For every action, there's a reaction. Mm -hmm. So if I have something inducing my happiness, won't that bring me down to a depressed state if it's that's not the natural? That's the again of the system. It's not, like well, I, it just keeps going. It says, okay, there's a shutoff point. And again, this is where we're, you know, people always think of cannabis as getting the munchies. Well, guess what? We're using it for people that are obese now. But, Doc, th there's a setup there. Because I've had friends where they be like, oh, man, I ain't got no marijuana. I'm depressed. Man. Oh, my gosh, man. Well, maybe because this is what they are lacking and bringing up the point of this but huge thing of PTSD. We've got these patients, vets that are out there that are depressed, that are dying. No, and I can understand that. Cannabis but now. So what I'm saying is that okay, my natural. Let's just say my natural body function it gives out a 60. Okay, with marijuana it takes me to 100. So now it's taking me back down below 60. Now I'm depressed because I'm not. It doesn't work like that. Or not for, not, well, not for me. I can't. You know, can't speak for everyone. But uh, okay, a lot of people, a lot of patients are using cannabis to treat depression. It's actually right. something that helps to relieve their depression. And mm -hmm. I, I think. One of the problems we have with talking about cannabis is we have all these frames around, say, alcohol or tobacco or drugs that we think of, and we try to apply them to cannabis, and they don't. The, no, no, I'm strictly, when, I, when I'm coming at cannabis, I'm strictly talking about people that I know that strictly smoke weed mm -hmm. and have gotten locked up for weed, mm -hmm. have been repeat offenders over weed, mm -hmm. everything, not, no alcohol in sight. Mm -hmm. No methamphetamines, no coke, no needles. I'm talking about strictly marijuana. Mm -hmm. and, and for every one of them, there's probably 10, 20, 30 of me. Uh, right. Everybody's different, and there might be some underlying thing now, going on with them. I don't now, know. Ian brought up a good point. Now, studies have shown that people of color 
-hmm. Like, Caucasians have a higher tolerance for alcohol mm -hmm. and drugs and when we get it, we, we get, we get we're, we're higher susceptible to become addicts. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Ian, you made that point, yeah, right? because we absorb it. The melon is a great absorber and a mm -hmm. conductor, so we, that's yep. why we had the best taste buds. <laughs> and and uh, it also uh, puts you all at uh, a disadvantage in drug testing. Yes. Right, uh, absolutely. You're more likely to get popped in drug testing, especially absolutely. hair testing. The, uh, the people of Mediterranean and African American descent absolutely. will hold on to that in their hair longer. Mm -hmm. uh, blonde, white guy Do you like think me that's the reason like that. why it's illegal? The reason why it's illegal? Because uh, most of the drug laws are against people The reason of color. why marijuana was first criminalized back in 1937 was because we recognized that we couldn't lock people up for the color of their skin anymore, so we found a way to lock them up for what they were doing. Absolutely. That's what Amen. it really is about. There's a great book out by Michelle Alexander called The New Jim Crow. So she's an Ohio State University professor. There's, there's a breakthrough book where she takes a look at the stats. There are more African-American people under correctional supervision for drugs today than there were slaves in 1850. So this is a system of control and a system of uh, abuse of people, and, and it's a way of controlling people, and that's one of the primary reasons I fight this. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm interested in helping people get high or breaking the rules or doing bad things, but I'm just interested in justice and freedom and fairness, and it's just not right uh, for us to be treating people this way over something they're doing to just themselves. True. Continue. Yes. Well, uh, Black Sun, I'm uh, Gideon right here. And uh, when we talk about uh, cannabis sativa and its effects, uh, when we talk about inhaling it, mm -hmm. the burning mm -hmm. of that uh, herb seems to be toxic because, uh, and when I say it seems to be toxic, because anytime you burn anything, mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, it changes the nature, the chemical mm -hmm. compound, as you were saying. Of course, I've used uh, marijuana for many years off and on, and uh, it makes, uh, for me, it's been my, the way I've medicated myself. Mm -hmm. But my brother, I, I mean, ha, when you were talking about marijuana and its effects on our people, what made you key in on that and, and it, as it pertains to the criminalization of the... Uh, because I'm trying to figure out where the government is coming right now. All of a sudden, you want to decriminalize it legally. I wonder if this is just a big pacifier to pacify us, make us more docile, weaken our sperm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're trying to control mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, because basically all the drug laws that ever been made is against people of color. Absolutely. All the safety laws are for white people. Absolutely. Gen Gen well, and then Sister Chi, you were mentioning, because see, you all are so educated in this uh, arena, and that is such a beautiful thing, because that's what we need is education. Mm -hmm. And I believe you're correct. That's, but it was, uh, we did a show called Smallpox in the Blanket. That's right. But we were talking about marijuana. And of course, Black has always had uh, an issue with marijuana. Now he's changed and says miracle, <laughs> medical marijuana is on the scene. But he used to rail on me because I smoke. But I think there are many in our community, I think because of the propaganda that has been put out, that rail against the use of a natural herb. Now, Sister Chi, when we talk about the naturalness of marijuana, how do you feel it's being applied in the government's input into our system? Because remember, Maxine Waters in uh, the Senate was saying that uh, crack was put in our communities in the 80s. My brother just mentioned about this. What are your thoughts as a naturalist looking at the government's involvement with this issue? Well, I think that there's a, a couple a couple views on that. The one is that um, the government is always looking for a way to make money. Right. <laughs> and that way to make money, in my view, it doesn't matter about healing. It doesn't matter about lives. How many how many people's lives are sacrificed? Mm -hmm. It's it's their bottom line. It's their their bottom line is is how can we make money? How can we make a profit on mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. And and that, that that's that's the piece that you know I like to look at with a, a magnifying glass. Um, on the other side of of me being an herbalist and me being a naturopath is is that you know when I go into the health food store and I and I and I'm gathering my herbs to you know either assist my body in healing or assist others in in their healing journey. Um, you know I like to be able to you know go up to the um, herb, herbology section and you know if I need to get some cannabis mm -hmm. 
to assist someone or assist mm -hmm. myself, you know, and, and tell them, you know, just about how much to take, or maybe they should turn it into a tea mm -hmm. or a tincture mm -hmm. um, in order to heal themselves. Okay. So, you know, there is a positive side of the healing benefit Absolutely. of cannabis. Well, you know, Delta 9 THC, the chemical agency, that's the only thing I have disagreed with you on, with your beautiful eloquence, is that marijuana is a drug. Because to me, how I define a drug is something that is chemically created and not just the, something that gives an altered perspective or altered state of your personal self, but it's a chemical. So when you say marijuana is a drug just because it has an, an agent that they have classified as Delta 9 THC, how then it, there, you, know, you have uh, other mandrakes there are other plants that have a poppy that, so before it's synthesized, it's not a drug, it's just a plant. So talk to us about that a little bit. To me, um, this is a drug because it has a way of where it's measured as far as half-life, it has a, a metabolism, it goes through a system of a pathway, we call it, is if it's ingested, it has to go be going through our body from the mouth into our digestive system. Mm -hmm. It goes into the liver where it's metabolized right. and then it's going through the rest of our body. Exactly. If it is being inhaled, it gets into our bloodstream. Exactly. It, so anything that we consume that has an impact, I would classify as a drug. Now, you can have a drug. Well, let me ask you this briefly. Cayenne pepper, it has an impact. Absolutely, but it's a naturopathic. There's different categories that okay. we are classifying, and this is where I agree with you that right now cannabis is in a Schedule One drug mm -hmm. classification, meaning that it has no medical use. Mm. Disagree. Mm. We've learned this. Right. Is there information about it? Absolutely. Maybe not all of what they like in mm -hmm. the United States, but it's out there. Right. And does it have a potential for abuse? Mm -hmm. Anything could have a potential. Absolutely. Water, you can abuse water. Again, this is my passion, is that cannabis is not killing somebody. Exactly. We are getting people dead from oxycodones. Yes. The narcotics, the Tylenol. Absolutely. And yes, aspirin. Yeah. People Vioxx, are anyone. Yes, <laughs> but again, Vioxx was a great drug, and I'm not here to promote anything. But again, you use it in the wrong person ah. with the combination, mm. it's deadly. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, you're trying to, you're chomping at the bit here. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I appreciated what you had to say about drug versus plant, because it's something where I think there is a, we can use drug in the scientific sense where so, the doctor is absolutely right. If, right. It's, if it's got a, 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 a route of administration, if it's got a half-life, these are the scientific ways that we call things drugs. Mm -hmm. But then there's also rhetoric. There's also talking and exactly. culture, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think drug in our culture has this connotation of the pill, the the synthetic, the artificial, mm -hmm. and has the uh, that there will be side effects, mm -hmm. that there will be a certain dose. Mm -hmm. That there mm -hmm. we, and so if we call marijuana drug in rhetoric, we end up getting put into that little cubby hole of, yes. well, what's the dosage of it? How much should you use? And, mm -hmm. and well, as we've discussed, cannabis is more something a patient uses and, and trial and error. I mean, mm -hmm. Dr. Uma is telling me that her patients teach her what, mm -hmm. how they're using mm -hmm. it, right? So in a rhetoric situation, I like to say, Opium, coca, and marijuana are mm. plants. Right. Mm. Heroin, cocaine, and hash oil mm -hmm. are drugs. Because mm, now exactly. that you've now that you've modified the plant, taken mm -hmm. out of its natural state, and mm -hmm. put it, but that's in a rhetoric sense, okay. not a pure scientific now, sense. Now let me hit you with this spiritual component because okay. I, I got a little age on me ranching now. Uh -huh. I was around Woodstock time, <laughs> and that so when when we I believe that when we talk about government, it's simply a nautical term that's rel relative to the. Uh, the elite, those mm -hmm. who would control the rest of us. In the 60s, however, we saw the love, peace, and war movement. Marijuana was a major component of bringing people together and really bringing, breaking down a lot of barriers and labels and titles. Mm -hmm. I believe one of the main, major components of why they had to criminalize it was to stop its influence of bringing people together where we would be loving and caring for each other on another level or rather than like you talked about this incessant capitalist agenda of work, work, work until mm -hmm. you're dead. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? I'd like to get your thoughts about the impact of marijuana and how it 
makes you a little uh, easier to get along with. Me, stop, me, well, stop y'all wanting to kill folks. That's, yeah, right. Come out. <laughs> that's right. Well, many people, many people refer to a spiritual act, aspect of their cannabis use, and the, and the Woodstock era that you refer to uh, still reverberates today in the opposition to legalization. A lot of people who are opposed to marijuana legalization aren't really upset about pot. It's pot smoking hippies it's exactly. liberal uh, pr uh progressive politics it's vietnam they're still pissed about vietnam war whatever Hello, it might be, you know? teach, teach. so it's it's it, there is that aspect to it and if you look through all of the uh world religious text islam and christianity and buddhism all make some sort of reference to mm -hmm. the healing nature of plants generally mm -hmm. and some cannabis specifically mm -hmm. so there is a, a spiritual aspect to this and i think it's an interesting theory that there was an awakening, a renaissance in the 60s, a, uh, the love generation and let's peace and, and you know, the, the Beatles and John Lennon and all that going on. Not STDs. And, and, I, and I think, <laughs> that's yeah, I'm fortunate. and I think there's, you're right, I think there is an aspect to the use of cannabis that is communal. Yes. Uh, there's a very famous uh, Nixon tape where R Richard Nixon's ta talking to Art Linkletter. Do you remember Art Linkletter? Absolutely. He's talking to Art Linkletter. Kids say the darndest things, right? <laughs> yes. So he's talking to Art Linkletter, and Linkletter says, well, the major difference, of course, is when people drink alcohol, they drink it to be social, but when people use marijuana, they're doing it to get high. Mm. And I'm like, what is more social than a joint circle? Exactly. I've never passed a beer around a bunch of fellas. <laughs> Hello? You know, you know what I'm doing. not doing that, but lots of people will pass a joint around. It's very social. It's one of the yeah. most social drugs there are. Cocaine, people go do that by themselves. Absolutely. You know, they do that That's by that themselves. girl. You know. Let me ask my brother, because, you know, I don't know if you smoke or not. You're like a straight soldier. <laughs> but, you know, you come up from the hood. I know you've been around Of course, it. of course. Of what course. about the spiritual components of uh, marijuana and its uh, influences? Of course, in the... Uh, Native American community, they passed the peace no pipe. No doubt. This is the drug of choice. Is that why they lost? Yeah, this is the drug <laughs> of choice, man. This is the drug of choice of original people, man. Absolutely. Well, that right now, I don't think we should get too drugged up, man. Because I remember right after the hippie days came COINTELPRO, man. Mm. You know, they get us like that. Mm. I think that's the part that got Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman got away with it because he had weed in his system. They criminalize you mm -hmm. with that weed in your system. And there was a guy that got shot. They said he got handcuffs in the car and he shot himself. They mm. said, oh, he got him. He arrested him because he had weed on him. Exactly. You know, this is a, it's, it's kind of like a bait it, for us to bite on. Exactly. So I, I think responsible people should smoke in their house, mm -hmm. no police, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nobody, no white people looking at you. Just mm -hmm. be by yourself and smoke. You're going to do it like that. Mm -hmm. If you do it out in the open, mm -hmm. it's a complete setup, man. That's, 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 that's my Opinion. Oh, okay, well, Sister Chi, what are your thoughts? And, and the spiritual aspects and how, as an herbalist and, and a naturopath, I mean, I already right. know you, Zen, <laughs> Buddha, yeah, go up right. talk to you. Well, you know, as far as getting high, I mean, to me, these are times when, especially melanated people, need to really be alert. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much assault on us mm -hmm. in particular and assault on the human race in general mm -hmm. um, and and for myself um, being that I'm into um, you know Tai Chi mm -hmm. and Qigong you know mm -hmm. I can elevate myself spiritually and my mm. consciousness mm. with my meditation mm -hmm. I don't need an outside substance to assist me to do that now mm -hmm. I'm not um, condemning or condoning someone that may need that for assistance true that, true but that. if in fact they need that for assistance I would recommend or would be um, you know, I, I would suggest to them to, you know, to to move forward with that, mm -hmm. but to not use that long term as a crutch. Once they get over that point where they don't need that anymore, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. they may be able to do it themselves because that's what healing is. It assists the body in healing mm -hmm. itself. And then you don't need that anymore. You don't need it as much. So what is that so. spiritual masturbation? Anyway, <laughs> well, we go on. <laughs> to, just to add to that, you know, I am originally from India, and I come from a culture where we're about the mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And cannabis is the one drug that's out there that connects the mind and body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, the history goes back to within the Hindu religion, Lord Shiva went up to the mountains, mm -hmm. rested, and was underneath the cannabis tree, ate mm -hmm. this and brought this back down. And this is why to this day in India, mm -hmm. it's actually something that is respected in the holiday times. Mm -hmm. It's used in different forms. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to history. This is not something new. This Absolutely. is the beauty, mm -hmm. again, of cannabis that I, I keep wanting to reiterate mm -hmm. is that we've known about it. Mm -hmm. We might not want to have the 
evidence base, but we do have the evidence base. Sure. I see it when I see my patients coming mm -hmm. back and they tell me about that they're off their 26 medications. Certainly. And, mm -hmm. and they're feeling better. They're improving their lives with their families. Mm -hmm. They have a quality of life. They want to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they want to be able to go to sleep at night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to start that day. And so it is that, again, that adaptability and restoration mm -hmm. of balance. And that's the body. medical. And I want to ask you how, in, in, in our estimation, this conversation hopefully is enlightening our community that the people who use marijuana is broad and, of course, we know even presidents. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we can begin to change the image, the profile of the marijuana user, yeah. and then uh, uh, Mom and them and, and the conservatives and all of them That's can right. begin to realize that it's just That's the question I ask you. Who's the number one user? Which race is the number oh, one Oh, you know who the most high is. Well, the most it. high is spirit. No, no, but no. The there's, most no most high high. there's no most high. There is no God. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's no God. Go ahead. Generally speaking, uh, per capita rates of marijuana use are most, uh, actually, it's Native Americans uh, and uh, Pacific Islanders who have the highest uh, marijuana use. It's something like 50 to 54 percent of them have tried it in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Lifetime use for white folks is somewhere around 46, 47 percent. For black folks, about 45 uh, percent. Latinos is down to something like uh, 20 something, and Asians is like 17. You mean the white folks ain't the most high? No, no. It's, <laughs> drugs, drugs overall. That's right. No, no. Say overall drugs. Who's the most? Oh, overall drug yes. use. I don't know. Oh, the stats oh, oh well, no. Come on, no. I don't know the stats. You don't know. I don't know. Oh, I, there you go. We'll let, we'll let him off. We'll let, let him off. We'll let him off. You know, know the off. real deal. We know the real deal. <laughs> I did want to address uh, uh, Sister Cheese's point though about uh, you know the crutch, right? Okay. Um, if you need a crutch for a broken leg, eventually your broken leg heals. You don't need a crutch. Exactly. But if you got polio. You might need to crutch all your life. Exactly. So let's make sure that we understand that, you know, crutch, crutches are good sometimes, you know, for well, helping people. The terminology live. crutch for me, because see, there are some people like myself who operate in what we call an, an inebriated state at an optimum level of proficiency. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're all different. Yeah. So at the end of the day, when one individual utilizes, he becomes paranoid. Another, for me, when I use, I want to exercise, I want to work out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can use it for mm -hmm. whatever I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's so when you talked about the sperm issue, which is a real relevant issue, I, I really want the doctor to discuss that uh, as it pertains to uh, what them saying. And of course, again, we are behind MA lines, so there is propaganda as a propaganda machine. So I don't know if we can believe everything they say, but what do you say? So to say the exact question you want me to answer. What does marijuana reduce sperm count? It could have an impact absolutely in the society because there are people with sperm count issues that are not doing cannabis. So it's not just the only cause. It could be just living day to day or what you're working with. One of my specialties is occupational medicine. We know that there's so many chemical impacts. We know there's also deficiencies with just mineral deficiencies exactly. that, we're seeing exactly. that could also cause. It's not that cannabis alone causes. Bad water. Right. You know, we are I, on the way out in the arena. I, we just thank you so much for each of you coming out. Go ahead and make a conclude, but we're about well, 30 seconds before we go out. I want to leave you with the fact that cannabis is not an entrance drug. It's yes. an exit drug from pharmaceuticals and, doctor, and narcotics, and that's coming from Dr. Uma. Welcome to the arena. Thank all the guests. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We hope to be back next week with another powerful arena mm -hmm. attack. Black Sun and the family of Comcast. Peace in the Middle East in your hearts. And right here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I didn't mean to do that. Right, I didn't mean to do that, Black. Oh, we still alone? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you all for having me here. It's been wonderful visiting from Portland, Oregon and visiting Atlanta, Georgia. Excellent. Things are quite different. Uh, and I want to encourage people to